2023 meeting be accepted as presented with the addition of fencing request and request for municipal support under the order of general business. Do you need that? Second, Second, Commissioner Gregor. All in favor? Yep. Thank you. Be resolved that the minutes of the July 21st, 2023 regular meeting of council be hereby approved and circulated. Do you that? Councillor Fisher, second, or Councillor Hatch. Discussion? Any errors or omissions? All in favor? Yes. Okay, thank you. Be resolved under financial general account. Be resolved that August 9, 2023 general accounts payable, main checks number 6640 to 6662 and 6664 to 6683 in the amount of $137,387.11 be hereby approved. Please move that. Council McDonald, seconder. Council McGregor, discussion? All in favor? Yes. Yeah. Pass the motion to Councilor McGregor. Yes, I do. Okay, be a result of the general accounts payables check 6663 to Dave Kirkwich in the amount of $2,000 be approved. We'll get a mover. Mr. Hatch, second by Councillor Fisher. Any discussion? All in favor? Carried. Yes. Okay. Be resolved that the direct deposit 275 being staff payroll for the period of July 10 to July 21st, 2023, in the amount of $16,639.03 be hereby approved. Please move that. Councillor Fisher, second Councillor McDonald. Discussion? All in favor? Yes. Be resolved that direct deposit 277 being staff payable for the period of July 24th to August 4th, 2023, in the amount of $16,279.05 be hereby approved. If they move that, Councilor Fisher moves. Second, Councilor Hatch. Discussion? All in favor? Yes. Be resolved that direct deposit 278 being paid the election payroll for the period July 10th to July 21st, 2023, in the amount of $279.15 be hereby approved. Councilor McGregor, second Councilor McDonald. Discussion? Yeah. All in favor? In favor. Thank you. <laughs> be it resolved and direct upon the 279 being council indemnities for the month of July 2023, in the amount of $4,646.42 be hereby approved. Move that, Councilor McDonald. Second, Councilor Fisher. Discussion. All in favor? In favor. Good. Under the utility account, be resolved that the August 9th, 2023 utility accounts payable being checks number 1049 to 1059 in the amount of $11,101.20 be hereby approved. Please move that, Councilor Hatch. Seconder, Councilor Fisher. Discussion. All in favor? Yeah. State for revenue expenditures be resolved that the statement of revenue expenditures report to July 31st, 2023 be received as presented. We move that. Councilor Fisher, second Council McDonald. Discussion? All in favor? In favor. Bank reconciliations be resolved that the bank reconciliation for the month of July 2023 be approved as previously circulated. We can move that. Mr. Hatch, seconder. Mr. McDonald, discussion. All in favor? In favor. Okay, that takes us to the delegation section. With us today, we have for the discharge of Jeff Touchman. If you want to come forward, please. Turn up to the hot seat. Right on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first of all, I just uh, 
like to thank you for uh, having me here. Um, just to have a general talk with uh, with your crew. Um, I uh, wanted to uh, meet with all my RMs um, throughout the last couple of years, and for whatever reason, it just took so long for me to get here. So I'm glad I'm here. Um, I didn't have much of an agenda. I just wanted to have a general discussion to introduce myself and uh, basically some of the priorities that the uh, Conservation Officer Service um, has been uh, has been bringing forward over the last few years and will continue to do as um, it's the middle of August, so it's our busy time going to be coming up uh, right away. Uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, I live in Carberry. Um, I've been here for roughly about uh, almost three years now. Um, I took over for Jerry Reset when he retired after about 25 years um, in 2020, 2020, I believe. And uh, just, uh, I'm from Southwest Manitoba. So I grew up on the very Southwest corner of Riding Mountain Park. So I'm familiar with the area. Um, used to play hockey and baseball coming down to Wawanisa and generally around the area anyways. But uh, if you, um, do recall, um, Minister Nesbitt made an announcement in June regarding a um, communication center as well as the reopening of the brand and office. So um, those positions have gone out for lateral. Um, I haven't, um, I guess, got anything formally from uh, my supervisors. However, in all likelihood, um, the brand and district office is going to be. Uh, patrolling the, the Oakland uh, Womanisa, probably RM. So likely you'll be dealing with another conservation office, which is good for the fact that um, Brandon's closer and, uh, you know, areas like yours and over towards Shiloh are generally a hot spot because of, that's where most of the elk are concentrated. So over the last few years, um, the priority for uh, the current government was targeting night hunting and dangerous hunting activities. So starting this time of the year, um, I spend many, many a night uh, sitting out in the field waiting for spotlights and whatnot. So, so that's coming up. Um, the current government uh, threw a whole bunch of money, um, you know, to help uh, the Conservation Ops Service on the ground, whereas uh, they gave us some um, um, aircraft and they uh, signed a three-year contract with the um, possible extension to a company from Winnipeg. So we have uh, the ability to fly a helicopter um, at night uh, with night vision and whatnot. Um, so um, helicopter is good in the fact that you improve your, I guess, um, you improve your chances of uh, apprehending a night later. So when they're flying, you can see at night probably upwards to 10, 15 miles. And uh, you can see that that spotlight uh, sweeping and whatnot. Um, and another thing with uh, Southwestern Manitoba, we find um, the minute that uh, we do um, encounter a night hunter um, and we position our vehicles in a spot where we can uh, make a vehicle stop, the minute the, the red and blues come on, nine out of 10 vehicles take off on us. So what the helicopter does from an enforcement perspective is once they run on us, they can keep continuity and follow where that vehicle is going. So we may not be able to stop the vehicle right there where they were lighting. However, we might be able to find uh, another bottleneck or be able to safely stop uh, the vehicle down the road. And as far as continuity of your evidence, you always have an officer in the helicopter to be able to follow that vehicle and be able to go in front of a judge and say the vehicle that the boys stopped or the, the crew stopped at that particular area is the same one that was spotlighting. So it kind of increases our chances for convictions uh, by quite a bit that way. Um, as far as uh, recent um, enforcement, uh, um, you know, takedowns of uh, night hunters, um, we just finished up with a, a file from the winter of 2021 where we ended up getting a $5,000 fine and uh, loss of a 2019 uh, uh, Dodge Ram just over by Criddle Vane. Um, so 40, 40 some thousand dollar truck plus, you know, rifles and everything. So um, 
as you uh, as you guys know, you have lots of elk in your particular area, and it seems like uh, the elk attract a lot of the, uh, the individuals starting in August until realistically our back roads plug up and they can't drive around anymore. So um, recently, um, the government, um, in partnership with I believe it was a university in the States. Um, they did a survey um, with uh, drones and they had a general idea of how many critters we had in game hunting area 30 and then um, just to the south of the number two. However, using the infrared drone over a span of uh, two different winters, uh, they were able to turn determine that uh, game hunting area 30 itself at about 20,000 deer, which is a lot, and upwards to about uh, 1,900 elk, which is a huge, probably over 100% increase from the last time they did a uh, survey. And I'm not 100% sure whether or not the drone was able to fly over CFP Shiloh because of the air restrictions and whatnot. But uh, if they hadn't, um, you can bet that the number would even be higher. So between game hunting area 30 and our population over towards Ninette there, there's a lot of elk in the area, which I'm sure uh, you individuals as counselors get a lot of complaints regarding uh, critters, um, you know, wrecking fences and, uh, and uh, crop damage and whatnot. Um, I know that over in, uh, in Ninette area, they do have a depredation week where they have that winter um, elk hunting opportunity for, um, for taking an elk and right before Christmas and I've been pushing um, the wildlife managers in Brandon to actually include that in game hunting area 30 and I think that would help because it would give licensed hunters another opportunity to you know get an elk um, in game hunting area 30 because the priority system is it you know you are able to get drawn for an elk license um, once every 10 years maybe so it kind of gives uh, more people an opportunity um, to be able to take an elk and it helps with the depredation issues because, you know, right around Christmas time, especially if we do have snow, I start to get lots of calls with uh, elk uh, coming into bale yards and, you know, finding a stack of silage and stuff like that. So I think uh, it would be beneficial, um, not talking a whole lot of tags, but probably you know, 10, 20 tags or something like that. Like I said, to give people those opportunities, and especially for, uh, you know, some of the landowners too, where, you know, as stewards of the land, they allow the elk to feed there all summer and stuff like that. It's only fair that uh, that they're given, the, you know, an ample opportunity to take an elk for themselves, to put some um, food in or some meat in the freezer. Um, I'll just open it up. Do you guys have any questions for me um, or any comments, concerns um, that the, the district should be aware of? One of the things we get all, quite often is that there will be a dead deer in somebody's yard in town here. We're never sure what we should do with the brain wasting disease that's out there. Yeah. We, suppose that we tell them most times just get a hold of uh, conservation and let conservation deal with it. And then there's usually a question asked to how do they die? And the current person says, I don't know. Yeah. So typically, um, most of our, and from my experience coming to Wobanisa and dealing with uh, people that do a complain and um, end up with having um, a dead deer in their yard, it's always, I'm going to say 95%, um, a yearling that just doesn't make it through the winter. What will happen is, um, and it's every year that I've been here, it's right around that March 1st to about March 15th, we start losing a lot of yearlings. and it's attributed to a few factors. One, the long winter, you know, they just, you know, had a, uh, you know, they were born late in June and just, you know, small going into the fall time. And another thing is um, people are actually killing them with kindness. Um, you know, thinking that, you know, the deer have had a hard winter, we got to, you know, get them through that extra month. And once they hit spring, they'll be fine. But after you know eating roughage and uh going through the winter and then uh getting you know either hay or bird seed essentially it cooks them from the inside out there's like uh, guts will just you know um turn and then uh, they end up dying from that um we've had times where 
you know, we picked up a deer and it's really bloated and you open it up, it's right full of bird seed and it's right full of, you know, um, oats and stuff like that. And it just, it's too much for them to handle at that time of the year. So more often than not, um, that's what we're dealing with. Um, typically, if I'm picking up a, um, a young deer, I don't do anything with it. I'll just take it out to a WMA and just allow for natural reclamation. Um, however, if it is uh, an older deer or um, a deer that's not young of the year, um, we'll lop the head off and then um, we'll get it tested as part of the CW stuff because the wildlife folks up and off and whatnot. Uh, the idea is trying to increase your sample area and just get all those samples in so that they can uh, you know, have an idea of where CWD is and um, what areas where it's mostly concentrated on so they can kind of concentrate their management efforts on that particular spot. As far as CWD, we haven't had any in our RM. Um, however, from the first uh, deer that's tested positive, it has made its way west. So it's in that Delarine country and stuff like that. And, the unfortunate, uh, of course, you're coming east or east, what? pardon me, yes, okay. the other way? from the west, okay. exactly. Thank you. Um, so it's inevitable, there it's going to slowly come this way, and uh, it's just managing your wildlife herds, which is um, unfortunate, but uh, it is a reality of something that we're going to have to deal with. There's been reports from ratepayers of a helicopter on their property with spotlighting. Seems like that might be no, no. So when uh, we're flying, we don't have a spotlight or anything like that. Our uh, our helicopter company is uh, exclusively regulated by Transport Canada. So they're staying a thousand thousand feet or whatever. Okay. Um, we don't go any lower, especially because they're flying at night. Whereas with the night vision and stuff like that, it's just, it's too dangerous when you go low. Um, as obviously if a helicopter hits something, it's gonna go down. But no, it's it's not us, um, definitely not. Yes. Uh, I'm a pretty big hunter and I'm wondering my son and I, like we were seven years getting drawn, like you said, just to get up to 10 now. Yep. But why don't they put the cow tags out for elk? To I, try to, you know, to get one of them out there, you know, to, Get more people out in the area and hunting this one. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. And that's what that uh, that um, that winter season yeah. generally is uh, designed for. Like, um, what will happen is obviously X amount of tags go out for the fall and it's bulls only, right? So, yeah, you're taking some elk, but you're not doing anything for the population. Whereas if you have um, a healthy population where and you also have depredation issues in a particular area by taking spikers taking bulls out in hindsight you're not really doing anything for the population other than you're putting food in the freezer for that particular individual but yes i agree that uh an outerless uh, elk season would be beneficial for especially game hunting area 30 or give the option for anything so if a guy wants to take a cow but absolutely yeah um i have the benefactor of many things, but the, I have, I'm feeding a population of 250, 300 deer every year in my silage pile. And then mm -hmm. it just, it's just bedlam. I got highways coming yeah. out of the river valley, but I also own land in 31. Mm -hmm. And I want a landowner's take. And I'm not waiting eight, 10 years. I'm, yeah. I'm, Christ, I could be dead tomorrow. <laughs> and it's yeah. not, Worth the flying. So, yeah. and I've tasted elk meat and it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But I also have a beef producer. So, mm -hmm. why eat beef and, and I can stay at home? Yeah, so, for sure. But uh, no, there's getting to be too many elk out there as to destroy fences. And yeah. I feel for the livestock producers out in South and the Hills yeah. here. Like, yeah. good God. And that's uh, that's been my experience is. Whereas you have X amount of the population that absolutely love the elk. They want to see more, more elk and stuff like that. And then on the other side, I've, I've heard from the producers and I've heard from the people that are fixing the, the fences and stuff like that, where there's too many and it's, and it's me as an enforcement officer. 
I can see from both sides. However, our wildlife managers, and that's exactly what they did, or what they do, and that was always the the holdup was any decision that wildlife managers on the wildlife branch make has to be based on science and has to have you know the backing of the numbers they finally have that so possibly things might start happening regarding because they actually have a benchmark of what the population is and then they can determine a number for licenses uh, to be able to um, manage that it gets a little tricky um, managing herds like that for the fact that we don't have a general idea of how many Métis and how many um, First Nations uh, animals are being taken because there is no regulatory requirement for them to report how many they take and um, when they're uh, hunting for sustenance they can hunt 365, um, 365 days a year and there's no limits on how many they can take obviously um, there's there's issues around uh, private land and stuff like that that uh, that we deal with. However, not knowing the exact number that they are taking, you know, throws a little bit of a curveball into into things. But obviously, from an aesthetic um, an aesthetic uh, you know avenue, um, you can see that there's tons of elk. Like you go down 340 over towards Shiloh and it's nothing to see 300 in the herd, right? Wow. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Just down, south down over at, uh, yeah, at section section eight and yeah. then just north of nine at exactly. So. The biggest thing is like you throw a curveball, give them fat, birdie fat on a stick and their bow and arrow back and let them out instead of with a spotlight <laughs> truck. So, so this the biggest problem I got was. Let's not get into that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Councillor Joe, do you have anything to add? No, I uh, I think I am golden there. Okay. Um, not to get off topic or anything like that, but um, have you guys ever dealt with uh, Devin Beatty? Yeah, uh, Devin with, Beatty. Yeah. yeah. That's with the wild pigs. Exactly. Yeah. So he's he's come and talk to you guys and stuff yeah. like that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because uh, eventually that's one of the things that's probably going to um, spill over into your particular area. And um, I haven't really seen too much over here, but I know the arm at Victoria has a lot of issues. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's hard on the producers. Absolutely. Yeah. Because North of the Circus River is really bad. Yeah. Like friends there. Yeah. So are we supposed to contact you or Devin? Uh, so there is um so between uh, what Devin does and uh, the Manitoba pork um they set up a squeal and pig, uh, pig line and a website that they recommend um you know reporting uh, sightings there and if there's enough sightings uh, anecdotally um in a particular area um Devin will come out and he'll set up a camera and stuff like that and if there is a population establishing what will happen is he'll work with some of the local landowners and set up the corral traps and stuff like that and try to uh, get rid of them that way. So, so yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. They just figure if you shoot at them, they scatter. And so they try to trap them in a central area and corral them. Yeah, and then what we find too is um, once they get uh, hunted hard, they'll turn nocturnal. Turn, turn and, and, and obviously, um, with uh, with wild boar, they're um, not covered under the Wildlife Act. They're um, the exotic uh, species regulation, so there's no hunting requirements, tagging requirements, or anything like that. However, under the Wildlife Act, it doesn't allow you to discharge a firearm at night, so you can't hunt them at night. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, I left some cards here for you guys, so if you have any issues, feel free to. Reach out to me, and uh, like I said, as of uh, right now, um, status quo. I'm still um, uh, patrolling this area, and, and, and district is established. We figure out uh, some borders and everything. You may or may not have a, a new office to deal with, but uh, mm -hmm. we're all the same area, and it's soft boundaries, and we go where the problems are. And wherever the elk are, there's problems. Do you go into 31 as well, Jeff? Yes, I do. Yeah, for sure. But uh, that's primarily. Uh, 
the boys and guys will do that for you guys. So. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Okay, we have resolved the presentation, the presentation from Chuck Munch, Sergeant of the Conservation Officer and in the Resource Management and Protection Division of Natural Resources and Northern Development related to conservation efforts and enforcement to be received. So, if we move that. McDonald, second, Councillor Fisher, discussion. All in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So public hearings, communications will move to. Okay, under the order of communications, we have several from the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. They are dated July the 10th, the 14th, the 17th, two on the 25th, July the 28th, one on August the 1st, and two on August the 2nd. We have information from Burns Mandel Engineering with respect to their on site septic system. Information from the Central Assiniboine Watershed District on the virtual meeting that they were holding on July the 31st. And there is an item under general business related to that. Federation of Canadian Municipalities had a communique on July the 17th and the 31st. Manitoba Association of Watersheds provided information on their 2023 Manitoba Watersheds Conference. We received correspondence from the Minister of Consumer Protection and Government Services. That's related to a grant that we have applied for and have received funding for. That is for asset management. Um, we will probably be coming to Council to try and get some instruction. So part of what we applied for was uh, software, which we've got a program that is currently set up in the pilot mold, mode that we can try. But there is also the desire to probably hire somebody who can camera all of our uh, water and sewer lines. And additionally, we're going to need some input from council on how we are going to go about grading, grading, not grader, um, our road system so that we have some way of determining from poor to good. So some of it might be based on what the composition of the road is, but it may also uh, want to include traffic counts or weight that's traveling the roads. So if we could probably at some point here get some information from Council on what you're thinking in that regard, we would have the opportunity to hire somebody to do that and give us that data for asset management. Uh, we received information from the Minister of Municipal Relations with respect to additional provincial funding. It's just over $134,000 to be used for infrastructure, so capital projects. Manitoba, her multi-stewardship Manitoba gave us an update on their transition on what they're going to do with the recycling program. If Council will recall, this started last year. And we came to Council at that time with a request that we be able to extend our existing waste management tender by one year so that we could see what the province was going to do with recycling. Uh, the information that they provided is indicating that they don't have anything quite in place as of yet. So we are likely to come back to Council with either a request that we extend the tender for another one year or Council wants us to re-tender. Municipal Relations provided a bulletin on the amendments to the Winnipeg Charter and Planning Act. They also provided information on an update requirement to accessibility plans, so that is something that we'll have to review for 2024. Uh, bulletin number 19 from Municipal Relations relates to the Municipal Economic Development Infrastructure Program. It's funding that is newly announced. It is not based on per capita, it is based on need. Uh, there is the ability to make more than one application and included in that is a requirement for the municipality to show what funding it would provide, but it doesn't give a formula that you have to match the funds or whatever. Um, we're probably going to be asking council if there are some projects that you might be interested in in that regard. The deadline for application is August the 6th. Um, one of the things that kind of came to my mind possibly for that program is whether or not the engineering services, the tender that we've currently got out, 
<laughs> might get under the. It's in drug It's October 6th. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, the engineering services tender that we currently have uh, might fit under their mitigation strategy. And I don't know if Elaine and Chelsea had any thoughts yesterday when you were speaking, if there was any other projects that kind of came to mind. <laughs> Yeah, looking at the guidelines, um, this is any water and wastewater or recreation culture projects are ineligible. So bringing in more dollars would be ideal if it's all through that. Um, obviously, it would have to be based on uh, prior quality. Yeah, it, it can't be a maintenance to change. Yeah. And it looks like we can make up to three applications. So if council wants, if there's anything that you think of that you're interested in, um, I don't know if they come back in September with a recommendation to make application, will that give you sufficient time to get the grant submitted? Yeah, one more thing that we were discussing was uh, sidewalk upgrades in town. It's really important for that. So yeah. I think it's very important, especially um, we had discussed all the amount of kids that walk to school and how icy it is right by the rink there. Um, they're always on the road. They're, they're never on the sidewalk, so there's no sidewalk there at all, actually. There's no room on either side with this pitch on both sides of that road. But not just there, I mean, the sidewalks over here, yeah. Cambodian sidewalks, not all on commercial or tumble. There's yeah, none on the other streets. We'll have to get some sort of uh, costing involved in to deal with that. Okay, I can do that. As so, to whether you do one street or two streets or yeah. where in the case may be. Would there be a preference on which area to, to tackle first? And I can find out the cost. Well, I think your main street here is when it has the most traffic on it because they talk about that as far as uh, enhancing movement of goods and products. Well, I can't yeah, but exactly. that would be more so this than to the fifth street. That's the one of the ones that gets used most in town. Yeah. There is one on commercial. Uh, there's that one stretch that has a sidewalk at uh, a deteriorated pitch or stanchion. That would take traffic, walking traffic off that road. So that would probably be something we could look at too. Yeah. From 4th Street to 7th. Commercial seven on the uh, north side, and then some trees need trimming to put people into the back on the yeah, 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 so that's that's used more. Yeah, either too, it would be nice to tie this side in. Together. Yeah, that's along Cliff Street. Yeah, oh. uh -huh. one more thing there about that like when when we made that wider down by the rink, you know, goes to the school, that material was hauled in there and paved wider for. A, or a little bit walk. But I noticed that paint, that paint, like we've had it painted a couple of times, and that paint's really fading because of plows, you know, when you're plowing and stuff, it wears it off and it's taking some latex paint now. But if we have any money, we should look at painting that again. Yeah. And then it goes right around the school towards the, the care home or hospital, and there's that's almost gone completely. I didn't even know that. But just have a look sometime. Yeah. Okay. So that's where, just to keep them walking there. And, Absolutely. Uh, just just the thought I noticed it when I was walking the other night. So. That's a good idea. Well, so other eligible projects under this are replacing bridges and culverts and widening and servicing local roads. So, that, could, that could be the, the tower road. The tower road the road needs a rod that widening. Yeah. So or the sluice. That, that, that would fall into that category, I think, because that road is too narrow. So the guys can take a lot of rocks, et cetera, to, to secure that bank before you can widen the road. So I would think that would fall into that category too. Yeah, that was high on my list too, especially 
it's dangerous in the winter. Yeah. It's real dangerous. Yeah, it'd be good if we get that white and put that yeah. all into that category. Yeah. But maybe, counselor, you can just think about that over the next little bit with this in mind. If you see something, well, there, there, there's tons of areas that need addressing, and we just yeah. gotta. Well, it's an ident identify them and let them let public yeah. works know if we can get into this program and get some money out of it and Absolutely. get those accomplished early next year. I also had another question about the bridges. Does anybody recall them being inspected or even like box culverts? Like, does anybody been know to inspect that kind of stuff? We kind of got rid of all our box culverts. No, we have like four. Do we still? Yeah. I'm just wondering. If that was a thing, or which bridges, which bridges are you? Referring? Well, mostly like the box culverts. Yes. Um, we don't, well, we have the high, the highways has all the bridges, yeah. right? Like the main one. I think the box culvert, well, last box culvert, I think, had a problem with one going by, by Downey's. So we had that bus that uh, school bus that had an issue there. Okay, just I wasn't sure if they had been inspected or if they get inspected or. Well, again, you'd have to identify them and okay. see what can be done. Yeah, we do I have bridge inspections done with Darcy. That's in your time. I think so, but so probably five years ago. Okay. So we could go back and probably pull that information. But a visual, visual inspection once a year isn't a bad thing. Yeah. Happen to see if there's debris in front, because sometimes that, if you can clean that out, it'll save that box cover that, you know, sometimes it gets that pressure there, right? And then push it out so it's okay. just a visual inspection or lots of times you can see if things are going to start to happen it'll you'll see where the gravel starting to fall in like if it's you know at the ends or lots of times you can notice it before it even gets bad so okay it's probably a good idea to talk to the greater operators too they see these roads with daily basis i mean they would have some maybe some input into what really is a concern yeah. i think Looking from above is a lot different than getting out and going in and yeah. looking. Um, I mean, I I trimmed them all last year, so I was right in there. But yeah. maybe worth another look, or maybe and, one but, coming. Yeah, let's take a good hard look. Yeah. I mean, we've got an opportunity here until October six. So. Right. Does uh, any of your talk of the slashing fall into the criteria under this at all? I'm not sure that this does. I know we don't know that for sure yet. Mulching you're talking about? Yeah, mulching. Yeah. I'm not sure about that yet. I don't want to say yes, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the infrastructure. We have it all. This is, that's more maintenance, right? Like it's not, unfortunately, I don't think it is. If we get into, I would suggest we get into anything that's questionable, do it as a separate application because they'll block one of one that we know is going to go through or has a chance to go through. That's a good idea. Okay. Okay, the other items that were under communications, um, municipal relations provided bulletin number 20, which was on their municipal service delivery improvement program. Peace Gardens provided information on their gala in the garden. We received information from Pardon Me on the Criminal Record Suspension Program. Prairie Mountain Health provided their summer newsletter as well as information on their physician recruitment strategy. The RCMP provided information on home security. And Sugar Road Products provided information on their hazardous product information. Okay. Be resolved that this updated communication be received. Councillor Fisher, seconder. Councillor Hatch. All in favor? Yep. Okay. Now, we'll put a new resolution in there that um, be it resolved that administration be instructed to prepare a list of priorities for the September 15, 2023 meeting for public application under the amended program that we just discussed. I think they're doing that. Councillor McDonald, seconder. Councillor McGregor, discussion? All in favor? Yep. Okay. Okay, committee reports. Uh, start up with the award three. Councillor Fisher, you have a written report. Anything to add to it? No, that's nothing. Okay. Councillor Jones, you have a report at all? Uh, no. Okay. 
Councilor Hatch, Award Two, you have a written report. Anything to add to it? Uh, that's okay. Okay. Award One, Councilor McGon, you have a written report. Anything to add? Nothing to add. Okay. Councilor McGregor, you have a written report. Anything to add? Nothing to add. Uh, mine. See a rules report. Anything to add? No, sir. Okay. Finance officer, anything to add to your written report? No. Okay. Public works, anything to add? Um, the only thing that just came up for us is that the boys will need chemical training. Chemical yeah. training? Yeah, for the improvement order. Is it on me? Um, so I'm not sure um, what the cost is. I just came up this for this. Can you give us some? Um, oh, yeah, I think I just asked them if Wemis would do. Um, but if it's a chemical handling, like a higher one, it might. When you're talking chemical handling, what are they handling right now? That's a the water plant. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That area? Yeah. Uh, but they want to have approved that there's, can, there's training in effect. Can we do a separate resolution for that to follow up as to give us a business plan for that or something that's going to tell us it just what we're doing in water? I think the requirement is for us to show that we've got a training program in place. Is that the way the order reads? It says that we need to train them more quickly. So within our budgets right now, we have a, a training allocation. So I would say whatever it is that we're being instructed to do to show uh, that we will do it within our existing budgets, or if it's over budget, it still has to be done. So I don't show I, I believe that it's uh, based on your like your your witness and your SPSs. It's just it's gonna be basically a, a paper trail of that we have a procedure for handling all the different chemicals that we have. Yeah. Uh, that was another one, Frank. <laughs> I've already been on uh, doing that one, but this one is specifically uh, evidence that they're being trained on it. So I don't know if that's women's tests online or I'm waiting to hear back. Sorry, this is workplace health and safety. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was thinking this was the insurance report. No, this is workplace. Yeah. It's any improvement. So, yeah. So again, we we've got no yeah. no recourse but to get it done. So we'll just have to find out what training it is that they deem to be acceptable and. I get staff enrolled. Okay, anything else? Uh, our chief reports is there. Be resolved that the verbal and written reports be received. You can move that. Councilor McDonald, seconder. Councilor McGregor. All in favor? Sure. sure. Yeah, I'm sorry. Before, before we do the Chelsea, vote. could we get an update on paving in the village? And <clears throat> Councilor McDonald brought forward a concern with uh, the quality of work done. Sure. <clears throat> um, I haven't seen in the exact areas that you spoke of, but I did talk to Zach David Phoenix today. <clears throat> and uh, they want to know about paving with the wheel. Um, and I told them to hold off until the drainage is done. We think that we should hold up on that project until the engineering um, and their goals to close this. Uh, just we don't want to do it and then have to do it again if it wasn't what they wanted. But for sure, when they come back to do that, we should address any issues that were poorly done. And the bottles, we still haven't done the bottles. So. Yeah, maybe if you could go have a look and then communicate that to them because yeah. it is. Pretty extensive. Yeah. Okay. We did it. So Maybe we can mark them out. And you, well, you can see it really. It's it's basically from uh, Park Street to Water Street, and and it's on the on the northbound part. Yeah. It's on. Yeah. It's on, on the northbound the, one. The east side. That's right. You can see it if you go down there. It's very easy to see that, and it's not just one or two. It's I think it's where the oil is sticking to the drum and it's picking actual up. So it's when they were rolling it. That's what it looks to me. Okay. But, and I, I, and if Barry's here doing gaming, I can go down there with you and talk to him. Okay. I, yeah, I, sorry, I missed what you said, but it, I think it's on this stretch on 4th Street and on 7th Street as well, right? Well, I guess 4th Street, I most is, is, I think it's on 7th Street. Is it too? Maybe I. 7th Street too? I think so. I, 
Okay, so we'll have the vote we'll again with the vote. All in favor? Yep. Okay. Okay, we have unfinished business. Um, this is uh, what we did electronic. So this is. Therefore, it be resolved that the electronic approval of the request for trial drainage permission and consent from Next Gen Drainery Drainage Solutions on behalf of Jeff Elder slash Jackson Elder Family Farm Limited to supply and install tile drainage on Southeast 17817 WPM and Southwest 16817 WPM and Southeast 16817 WPM be confirmed subject to the road being returned to its original state following installation including City of Brandon specifications for road work, with all work to be completed in consultation with the Public Works Manager. Can we please move that? Councillor Fisher, seconder. Councillor Hatch, discussion. <coughs> all in favor? Yeah. Under general business, on the expansion of the Central and Santa Boyan Watershed District, um, whereas Manitoba has prepared an expansion proposal for the Central Cinnaboyan Water Center District that supports watershed based management in Manitoba and outlines the details of municipal participation in the Central Cinnaboyan Watershed District. And whereas Ms. Valley Local Monisa has met with Manitoba regarding the expansion proposal for the Central Cinnaboyan Watershed District, and whereas the Council of the Municipality of Oakland Monisa understands the amendments of the Watershed District regulations. Will include the final details of participation in the Central Santa Boyan Watershed District. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the New Spelling Oakland Well Lisa supports the proposed area of the RM of Port of the Prairie and the New Spelling of North, North Oak, forming part of the Central Santa Boyan Watershed District in accordance with the Watershed District Act and Regulation. Let me see who that. Councilor Fisher, second Councilor McGregor, discussion. All in favor? Yep. Okay. Uh, be it resolved that the proposed fiber optic pass to the south side of road 43 north, east of road 109 west, in the southwest quarter 12819W, as outlined on the map attached to correspondence dated August 9, 2023, from where it's now be approved, subject to the fiber offset being one meter from the property line and all road crossings being directional drilled. And work area restored to its original form, uh, to its former state. I mean, move that. Councilor McDonald, seconder. Councilor McGregor, discussion. Yeah, I just got one quick thing, Dave. Yeah. What's the timeline of uh, our now returning uh, the area to its previous state? I'm sorry, what was the question? Say it again. Um, what the, the timeline? Oh, I for uh, putting the uh, area that they're trenching and drilling into the uh, original state. My understanding, Councillor Jones, is that they've got two separate crews that are working. Uh, one does the installation and then they've got a separate crew that is supposed to be following behind to do the restoration. If anybody is believing that their restoration work has been overlooked or that it's taking too long, uh, they can either give the office here a call or they can call RF now and they will send somebody out. They didn't give us a specific timeline as to how far behind the installation, the restoration crew is working. Would, would you like to do an amendment to the resolution, Councillor Jones, just put a timeline in there? <laughs> uh, no, if, if, if it's already been working, then I, I, would, just, I would just curious. Okay. I'll, I'll move an amendment. Yeah. Right in. yeah. The only thing I would have to check is within the original agreement, because if this would amend the original agreement, it's got to be different than just amending the resolution. But if you would like us to look into the. You, you, want, to do check. The step, you want to do the separate resolution then? I would say direct me to review the agreement and see whether or not we make, need to make an, agenda, an amendment to it to inflict a timeline. So, oh, you can do that. 
separate resolution? Uh, it'll be a separate resolution. It'll be separate from this specific okay. roadway. So we'll have to deal with this then first, right? Anything further on this? On this item? One other yeah. question regarding this, like some of the original uh, cable they plowed in at first, they haven't even addressed the ditch issues. They never come back. Yeah, and I guess that's where Councilor Jones is saying timeline is should be direct. Well, I, I think, yeah. It's, what if you leave it for even a period of 30 days, grass grows up, they can't see where they were, yeah. things get hidden. Well, uh, and, and, and we'll deal with that with a separate resolution. Okay. So on the, just on the first item, uh, the first resolution, all in favor? Yeah. Okay. No. I would do, uh, do the, the next second one. Second then okay. we'll do the next one as well. So being resolved that the proposed fiber path to the north side of road 37 north on roads 111 west, 112 west, and 113 west in the township 7 range 19W, as outlined in the maps attached to correspondence dated August 9, 2023, from now, be approved subject to the fiber offset being one meter from the property line and all road crossings being directional drilled and work area restored to its former state. So if they move that. Uh, discussion on this one. Okay, all in favor? Yeah. So being resolved that administration be directed to review the existing agreement to determine the ability to include a timeline for restoration. This comes from Newton. Gregor, that's your yeah, resolution. I'm yeah. just wondering, like, oh my God, who who determines and how do we determine that it's been restored to its former state? Like, right. I would, yeah, I would think that the, it would be brought forward by the homeowner. In this case, it was. Uh, I'm not sure if she has been charged to ours now, but I have twice. And I saw a curtain myself, too. So, I mean, if it's restored to its former state, it wasn't. So, yeah, I'm just wondering, like, you know, Craig's example, right? Like, what happens if they say, well, we have restored it? They, they, they should be track packing their trench line. Like, and that should be done immediately. Yeah. Uh, when they reach up the rock, I find they're, they're, not, they're not doing anything about it. Uh, trees, they'll they'll take a tree down, they'll move it, and it's left in our ditch. I mean, maybe if the tree was there before, maybe we should be doing something about it. I don't know. Small small trees, right? It's not really huge. I don't know. I mean, in, in this instance, the, the trees weren't a problem before right right they were fine i can actually enjoy them thoroughly and then they just plop them over and just right. them like that but, but we've had complaints from great pairs along uh lake clemente road about that too right yeah and i mean i think that that's kind of an environmental issue now i'm just wondering if there should be an addition to yeah Maybe direct you to also express concern to our general state that things are being left in. I had to pull a directional driller out that was buried in the highway ditch two years ago, and those tracks are still there. But right. You hit that on a snowmobile or a quad. So here, and nobody addressed the ruts. No, nope, nobody's addressed the ruts. Okay. I'd use a four wheel drive to pull them out. Where is that line? Uh, Road 100 West, right on the highway ditch. Number two. The name that suffice for you. I better read it. So yeah. Has it. yeah. Just see if that's what you were intending. Sure. It be resolved in administration contact are up now to advise because. Of concerns for restoration and administration be directed to review the existing agreement to determine the, the ability to include a timeline for restoration responsibility to confirm restoration. Councillor Greg, you're okay with the yeah. Councillor Jones actually seconded it. Yeah. You're okay with the amendment, Councillor Jones? 
Hello? Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, that's yes, right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I hope you that amendment. Okay. Discussion any further? All in favor? Yes. Okay. Um, whereas in 2021, Devin Willis was the successful bidder for the purchase of Lot 7 slash 10, Lot 6, Plan 140 BLTO located in Carroll, Manitoba. And whereas in accordance with land disposition policy number PR001, an offer to purchase agreement was entered into. And whereas in accordance with the offer to purchase agreement, the purchaser can request an extension to the two year construction requirement. And whereas the purchaser has requested a one year extension, now therefore be resolved that the request for a one year extension to the offer of purchase agreement for lot seven slash 10, lot six plan 140 BLTO located in Carroll, Manitoba, will us be approved. So move that. Councilman McDonald, seconder, Councilman McGregor. Discussion? Councilman McGregor? Mr. Chairman, could we get more of an explanation of what's going on here, what the property is, what the plan is? Okay, so this was the property that had the old store and whatnot in Carroll. Uh, Mr. Willex was wanting to, well, he did purchase the property with the intention of demolishing the store, removing any of the contents, and looking to do some reconstruction. Uh, Mr. Willex works out of province, so he has been doing this work when he gets home on his days off. He is finding that he doesn't believe he can complete the demolition um, and any reconstruction within the two years that's coming up just in August, and has requested the one-year extension in order to continue the work. Question. Uh, so what's the plan after the one year extension goes by and we're still not, we're still at the same stage? <laughs> I guess the municipality would have the option of going after Mr. Willex for um, not agreeing to the terms of his purchase. Um, it was an eyesore, it was a safety concern in Carroll, so the fact that there was somebody of interest who wanted to take all four of the lots, if council would recall back when this was offered, there were some individuals who were interested in looking one lot or two lots. Most of them were tackled the store lot as well. Mr. Willex was prepared to take that on. What stage is he at in demolition and it is? Um, I was there last year. He had about half of it demolished, and that's where he had done some burning that had caused some concern. He has since been demolishing it uh, piece by piece and hauling the materials away. So it is continuing. It's just not as that's paced as what he had originally thought he would be able to accomplish. I think that he mentioned doing like fire training exercise too, but I don't know if he interested show to those or not. I gave him the number though. It is progressing. Yeah. In some case it has stand still. No, it's not standing still, it's just not progressing as quick as he had anticipated it would. Okay. All in favor? Okay. It's resolved that the April 1st to June 30th, 2023 RCMP policing report as previously distributed be received. Let me please move that. Councilor Fisher, seconder. Councilor McDonald, discussion. All in favor? Okay. Be it resolved that request to build a non permanent fence on the municipal right of way at Northeast 3819 WPM, Smith. Be approved subject to an agreement being entered into relating to removal of the fence should the municipality ever need to utilize its roadway. So we please move that. Councilman Fisher, second Councilman McDonald. Discussion? Councilman McGregor. Councilman McDonald can go first. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just wondering more details on this. What, you know, All right. So um, again, Council will recall that a year ago, we had uh, the original owner of that property come forward and were requesting a zoning memorandum that would indicate that they were legally non-conforming on the build of their house on that property. It is right off of the service road off of the highway. And at the time, what their request was, was that uh, council make a determination that it wouldn't um, be looking to 
open the road. So whether or not it was to actually close the road at the time the council considered it, um, they were more than supportive of the zoning amendment, grandfathering them in. And with the pictures that have been provided, it's fairly easy to tell that the road and the parking area for the house actually sits on uh, the municipal right of way. But there is a large on a picture here. Let's have it. There is a large row of trees. This is a, a it's the municipal right of way. It's an unopened road. Um, there are miles of trees. At the time, um, a public works manager had indicated that there isn't a need for the municipal part of it. But when council was considering it, part of their discussion was related to the fact that if ever the property owner that is further to the further to the west, that if there was ever a need to uh, gain access to their property via a different route. Council didn't want to give the um, the okay to officially close this road. So what the new owner is asking is uh, the ability to build a fence. And when he was drawing up his intent, he is kind of circling the fence where the parking area is so that he would be allowed to um, get vehicles in and out without having to come at it with any different roadway than what is currently being done where their parking area is. His intent is not to have a permanent fence and he was more than willing if there was a requirement to enter into an agreement that it, at any future time, the municipality actually wanted to discontinue that he would in fact remove the temporary fencing. Originally, there was some concern with the way the um, maps on the assessment site showed that it might look as if the very end of their building was actually on the right of way. The new owner has had it surveyed. It is not. So in the drawings or the mapping that we see, what we're seeing is a bit of a shadow area that made it look like the building itself might be on the municipal right of way. It is not, it is back about five feet. That still doesn't meet current standards, uh, but it is grandfathered in. Um, he has the ability to do the fencing just through a uh, development permit. It doesn't require council authority, but because he is looking to be able to utilize the area where they currently drive in, and that is on the municipal right of way, it should have council approval if he was going to go that route. Mr. Chairman, I have a slightly different memory, and I'm guessing Shelley is more correct than I am, but I thought that we included that because we didn't be clear that we didn't want to open that road. I thought we were trying to give an indication so that we didn't have a, a request coming forward to open this road suddenly. I, I thought that was why we included that. So, but. so yeah, the original wording on the resolution was that I'd be directed to prepare a zoning memorandum indicating that the property is legally non-conforming and including an indication that the municipality does not intend to open nor maintain its municipal right-of-way. That was what was originally put forward. It was amended to take out the provision that including an indication that the municipality does not intend to open nor maintain the municipal right of way and that was because of the concern that perhaps the property further west at some point might need access in which case this is our legal right of way so again i don't believe there's any intent from the municipal side point or standpoint to do anything with that road but i can certainly understand the previous councillors intent that they didn't want to see it legally closed So this fence is just for deer only. Well, it looks like it's for a child. With dogs, okay. dogs and dogs and kids. Yeah. Yeah, they have two large dogs and um, grandchildren. And again, proximity to the highway, they want to make sure that their back area is fenced off. They are also doing a fencing area for their berry patch and orchard that is more 
fire and intents to try and keep you out. But Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Here. Okay. Be it resolved that the request for support from the Nesbitt Community Club for municipal staff time and equipment to transport up to four loads of dirt from Freebie Farms, the location of the former church in Nesbitt, be approved subject to administration being able to reach a mutually agreed club. On time with Creevy Farms to load and haul the material. Can you please move that. Councilor Hatt, seconder. Councilor McGregor. Discussion. Councilor McGregor. Uh, so basically, we would supply the truck to haul the material. The what I read in there. Correct, and the staff person to drive it. Yeah, we definitely don't want a private person driving no, the truck. No, and they would. They are. Um, Donating the dirt and their equipment to load the truck. And love what when it's the other end? That I am assuming is on the Nesbitt oh, committee. Right. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Carry. Okay, it be resolved that this regular meeting now adjourns to an in-camera meeting to discuss a financial matter as per subsection 152.3b3 of the Municipal Act and all matters discussed in camera are confidential until discussed in an open meeting as per section 83.1d of the Municipal Act. Can we please move that? Councillor Hatch, second your Councillor Fisher. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry. Wait. Okay, let's go again. Okay. Be resolved that this in-camera meeting is now is resumed back to regular meeting. So we please move that. And Donald Texas and Councilman Gregor, all in favor? So here. be it resolved that the proposed proposal for census charter for professional accounts for auditing services for the five-year period commencing January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2027. In the amount of sixty-six thousand to two hundred dollars plus the applicable taxes be accepted. Can you please move that? Councilor Don seconder. Councilor McGregor. Discussion. All in favor? In favor. Opposed? Sorry, I was in favor. Okay. Thank you. Um, so you want to keep this one? Yep. Yeah. Be it resolved that the, that a policy be implemented related to the requirement for commercial disposition of shingles, whereby commercial contractors will be required to contact the municipal office five days five days in advance of disposition in order for the municipality to arrange necessary bins, and the contractor be required to prepay the necessary fees and provide the receipt at the waste transfer station upon arrival. And further, that the new rates for the shingle distribution be considered in conjunction with the 2024 budget and review of fee bylaw. Can you please move that? Councillor Hatch, seconder. Councillor Fisher, discussion. All in favor? In favor. Be it resolved that the matter of requirement for risk improvements related to tank removal or double lining be considered in conjunction with the 2024 budget deliberations. Can we please move that? Councilor Donald, seconder. Councilor McGregor. All in favor? In favor. Okay. And, uh, we resolve that the administration be directed to prepare the necessary bylaw to, to, to deventure 1.360 million, 1,360,000 over 20 years at an estimated rate of 8% based on a combination of per parcel and assessment with an option to prepay the per parcel rate at $2,000. Um, I wonder if I should include in there for all properties in Wallanisa. Yes. <laughs> With the exception of roll numbers. Two, 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 zero, 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 two, two, one, two hundred. Two one two hundred and two two zero six hundred. 
Okay. So be resolved that the administration be directed to prepare the necessary bylaws to adventure one million three hundred and sixty thousand over twenty years at an estimated rate of eight percent based on a combination of per parcel and assessments with an option to prepay the per parcel rate of two thousand dollars for all properties in Wallonisa, with the exception of roll number twenty two zero 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 two two one two zero zero and two two zero six zero zero. So we please move that. Council Gong, second council patch. All in favor? In favor. Okay, so we all got the uh Mr. Councilor Hatch once again. Not that one. Let's go up one. There we yeah. go. Be it resolved that the low bid of Quarry Hills in the amount of $173,000 plus applicable taxes inclusive of material for one mile of Chief Bank Road from Highway 10 going to the east to the Dump Road be accepted to, ex to be expended by gas tax. And in there, I will include that this is for road clay capping services. Okay. Can you please move that? Councillor Krishner, seconder. Councillor McDonald, all in favor? All in favor. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so you went back. I did. So the only thing we have left is a notice of motion. And that would just be. So just a notice of motion. Yes. Does require a vote? No, so this is just an indication that Councillor Hatch has given written notice of his intent to introduce at least September 15th. To reconsider motion number 304 with respect to the payment of dust. So that written notice has been received. Okay, so prior to adjournment, Council Commission, do you wish to say? I would like to apologize to our Indigenous people. I spoke out of turn and it's not the true feeling of this Council. And all I can do is apologize. So. Okay, be it resolved that this meeting is now adjourned to meet again on Friday, September 15, 2023, at 9 a.m. at the Municipal Office in Long Mesa. The Council of Greater Moon, seconder. All in favor? Yep. Councillor Jones, have a nice trip. Thank you. We'll see you.